Hey, everybody, stick around because we are back at the campground and uh, Mr. We, got, Fish. we got Mr. Fish. I'm here. So shut up about it. Here he is. Thanks for clicking on this video. We are back to spend a very chilly weekend at Land Between the Lakes. We have got an absolutely amazing campsite here to show you guys. I got here a little bit late in the afternoon. Mr. Fish already had everything set up. This is a totally off-grid camp out, even though we're gonna be using his pop-up camper. This is gonna be a tremendous amount of fun. By the way, if we're having audio issues, I'm still working with a new set of microphones and apparently I ran off drove three hours and realized that I did not bring the cord to connect the receiver unit on my camera into the camera. So we're hoping that the internal recording on these things is going to be good. And if that's the case, then we'll have decent audio. If not, it's going to really sound bad. What? So you're just going to have to deal with that this time. It'll be all right. So let's give you a quick tour of the campsite. Let's do it. So here is Mr. Fish's pop-up camper. There's Mr. Fish. Over here is our poop-up camper. <laughs> that is our campsite latrine. But the best part of this, have a look at the view outside of the camper. It doesn't get any better than that. I'll tell you what, every night we're going to have this sunset. And we'll probably have a fire right out here somewhere so we can watch the fire and the sunset. You guys seem to really like when we camp at cool and creepy places. So we were kind of hoping to keep that theme going to keep you interested. When Mr. Fish scouted out this campsite, we had one goal in mind. Right up at the top of this hill behind us is a cemetery. We just hop, skip, and jump up the hill to a cemetery from, do you know when it's, what the dates are on it? Uh, I've seen everything from 1925 down back to the uh, 1880s. So it is a very ancient cemetery. We're gonna go up there probably tomorrow. We won't do much tonight because it's already starting to get dark. We're gonna need to get our campfire together. We're gonna need to start cooking dinner and that kind of stuff. But tomorrow we will go explore the cemetery, show you all a little bit about it. So stick with us. This is gonna be a fun and hopefully Creepy adventure. So we're cooking in the camper tonight. It's way, way cold outside and we decided that using the stove top in here would probably be a much better plan than trying to stand outside. So let's look around at our arrangement in here. So here's the dining table. We got a little Mr. Heater going over here. Warming things up. We're making some hoe cakes and soup or a stew tonight for dinner. There's Jeremiah's bunk over here on this end. There's my Mr. Heater sitting over here on this side. So here's my setup over here. Basically, we just throw all of our gear into the, into the beds. I got my quilt that's covering up my brand new climate sleeping bag. And you can't really see it, so I'm gonna turn a little light on here. Here we go. My brand new climate sleeping bag. I got a uh, climate zero degree bag that I have been dying to try out. And this is the perfect night for it because it's cold. And it's probably gonna be an early night. I'm tired, I had to work this morning and then drive all the way up here. So I'm beat, so at least I'll be turning in. Jeremiah might say, sit outside all I night. I might go for a swim. <laughs> yeah, I can see that happen. But uh, we'll bring y'all back later on. All right, so we're gonna try this one. Yes. Mr. Fish made some hot sauce. Yes, this one is uh, Red Savina Habanero Aji Limon. Um, I think there's one uh, 
I forget what it's called. So anyway, we'll I do, just we'll do a side by side. I, I just did a, a a fermentation. Now are both of these fermented? Yes, both of these fermented for about three months. Um, but this one, uh, half of it is fresh. The other half I took and simmered for about. 30 to 40 minutes. Then I added some, that one's a little hotter. I added some uh, peach nectar and some uh, pineapple nectar. I don't know, this one. That one's my favorite. That one is hard to beat, dude. I'm gonna have to remake that one on a bigger scale. <coughs> Whew. It's hot. You need to encourage him to make this and market it. It's in a uh, Engelhofer Stone Ground Mustard bottle. <laughs> this is, that's not his brand. <laughs> that stuff right there. Y'all, trust me, this is amazing. If you're not following Mr. Fish on YouTube, go find his channel. I'm going to put it down right here. You can go find it. Go follow him. He's got some great cooking videos on there. And believe me, you will not be disappointed. If anything, you're going to leave hungry watching his channel. If something weird happens tonight, I'll turn on the camera and bring you guys in. If not, we'll see y'all in the morning. When it's coffee time. Sleep tight. And this is the view that we woke up to this morning. So if you're going to go to bed with the sunset out your door, you might as well wake up with a view like this. What a, what a view. Nice coat of ice on everything this morning. fun starting with uh, partially frozen eggs. It's like at what point is somebody going to go, do you want cheese with that? And they're going to go, hell no, I don't want no cheese with that. Yeah. Table's frozen. <laughs> we'll put this here, how's that? Who would have thought something used for rice would be so good? <laughs> Multi-talented. Sir, that is the golden ticket. Yeah, it wouldn't be right if we didn't uh, document this issue that we're running into. Now, keep in mind that the area that Jeremiah and I both, you know, we live in different states, but, you know, for the most part, our weather patterns are, are generally the same. We don't normally deal with super cold weather. We came on this trip surprisingly unprepared for something, and we're actually finding ourselves in a situation. Now, I don't want to over dramatize this. We can remedy this, but we do have a situation going here that if you were on a long hike trip, or if you found yourself stranded, this, this could be potentially dangerous. Every bit of water that we brought with us on this trip is frozen. Both of us figured that, you know, we could leave things out because we, you know, it was large quantities of water. We figured we could leave it out overnight and it, and it would get cold or it might ice over, but it wasn't going to be a problem. But everything we've got is frozen. So let me, let me show you a little bit about what we're dealing with here. So we had this big soft side water bottle that Jeremiah brought with him that is almost completely solid. Uh, we brought it inside and put it in the sink hoping that it would thaw out. This jug, it's, it's, we've had it in here most of the morning. It started to thaw but it's frozen so much that the nozzle doesn't work. I had two gallons of water that I brought in my car. Both of those are frozen. Now, this was in the refrigerator overnight and my water bottle is frozen. I've got a case of these in the back of my car and they are completely frozen. Jeremiah's water bottle is frozen. Everything's frozen. Every, everything is frozen. So th this does create a bit of a hazard in that you know, even though it's cold outside, we still have to hydrate. We still have to be able to drink water. So we're going to rig up a system to kind of thaw some of this out. Uh, you know, right now we've got a lot of it just kind of sitting in front of the, of the Mr. Heater over here. We have to thaw some things out so we can have some drinking water. And so we're going to have to rig something up, figure that out, and then make sure that everything stays a little more environmentally controlled for the rest of this trip uh, so that we don't end up in an emergency situation and need water and not have it. Uh, it's just part of the adventure. It, it's it's still fun. We're having a blast here. It is cold. It is very cold. But fortunately, uh, we've come somewhat prepared for that. But this is a learning experience for both of us. 
you know, neither one of us really spends a lot of time in the cold. And uh, this is a, this is an experience for sure. You live and learn. Live and learn. Look how clear this water is. During the summertime, this would be a really good place to swim. Look how gorgeous that is. Camp's way back over there. It may be super cold, but there are definitely worse things to wake up to. Of course, the cemetery's right up there. Go explore that shortly. What is that? I don't know if you can see that yet. We gotta check this out. That appears to be the front steps of a house. That is exactly what that is. A little bit of ice on the ground here. We're gonna have to be careful. I mean, that front porch is right there on the water. I'm guessing this is one of the houses that was here before the dam was built and flooded all this. Wow, look at this, y'all. Pretty cool. So right now I'm standing in a place where somebody and their family probably lived over a century ago. I mean, this used to be probably somebody's house. Judging from the construction materials, I'm guessing it was a pretty nice house and a pretty big house. One of the really cool things about camping in the Land Between the Lakes area is that a lot of this was residential back before the land was taken and then flooded and turned into this national recreation. So anytime you're out for a walk through these woods or along the beaches, you just never know what you're going to find. Coming across somebody's house, is uh, that, make, that makes it pretty interesting. Here is the frozen Jeremiah in its natural habitat. We started putting together our campfire for tonight. We like a big fire, so uh, started gathering up a bunch of stuff. And here's our firewood that we're going to keep it going with. Over here I've got the Jackery solar panels working on charging up the Jackery unit. Of course we've got the little cook station that was featured in our breakfast video this morning. This is the Coleman 4-in-1 that I recently did a review video on. If you have not seen that, go look for that or I'll put a link down in the description box so that you can go find it. Of course we have our little sitting area here where Jeremiah is chilling. I am chilling literally. And there you go. I mean, what's not to love about that? Except for that guy sitting there. Swing down this way. Swing it around this way. So what we're gonna do in a little bit is, uh, this, this being a tourist lake, there's a lot of trash along the beach here, so we're gonna go out, maybe some little pokey sticks that uh, we're gonna take out. Try to pick up some trash, uh, we'll burn what we can, and then just bag up the stuff that, that we can't burn. Try to leave this place a little better than we found it. So we just went out on a exploration to go gather up some trash and gather up some firewood, and Jeremiah found a completely covered up stream bed. It, it was completely covered by debris that had washed down with it to the water and he found out just how deep it is and that that was before he realized he was falling and threw himself forward to keep from completely going down in it was that fun jeremiah i didn't hit rock bottom so that's all right <laughs> probably go up to my waist if it did oh, goodness that's all right so one of the cool things about this jackery setup that i've got i have the jackery 240 uh, and i have the 60 watt solar panels it's only been out here for a couple hours charging and it's gotten up to 100%. So I'm charging up a couple of things while the Jackery is charging so that I don't drain this out later by having to charge everything up. So I've got my camera battery and my phone hooked up so that they can be charging by the same power, the, the same solar power that's charging the Jackery. Uh, and then tonight when I need the Jackery for other things, it'll still be at 100%. Now we're going to go take you guys up to the cemetery up the hill. Have a look at that. 
Ever look at Mr. Fish? Nope. Leaving our campsite in the background. First off, we're gonna check out something over here. So I think this was the campsite we were originally gonna be in, but Mr. Fish said he liked that view of the lake a lot better. It smelled better. But they do have an epic fire ring here. And then there's a bathtub. A bathtub. Not really sure. I mean, somebody did something with this deliberately, but I'm not sure what the intention was. I mean, what what is what is that about? I don't know, but What's it looks like that? someone shot it with something. Yeah, it's been shot a couple times. Maybe that's what it was, a target practice. But what, I mean, what's this thing they rigged up here? I don't know. If you've got any thoughts on it, leave us a comment down below. Tell us what the heck they were doing with this. Anything to do with moonshine, maybe? Well, that strap makes me think maybe they were using it to, Tow something. like they were pulling it behind a truck and riding at it or something, but I, I just don't know what that, that rubber stuff that's zip tied in over that hole is about. You can go back up toward the road, in quotes, because this is not by any means meant to be vehicle accessible. All right, so here's the road to the cemetery. There's a good 30 degrees. That, is, that is a climb right there. My car could not get up here. I'm not sure I can get up here. Going back down there, I don't know if the angle translates very well, but. So here we are, the entrance to the Rushing Creek Cemetery. Now this isn't all of it. We're gonna go back here in a minute. We're gonna go a little deeper. Here you can kind of see some of the inscriptions. They do have a list of rules, including you're not supposed to camp here. It looks like they've got a few of these PVC crosses that probably are places where there is a grave, but maybe the gravestone's long gone. This is one of the things that I really enjoy. I know that sounds like a strange way of putting it. If I'm exploring a cemetery, this is one of the things that I always find fascinating, is these gravestones that have photos in them. This guy has been here since 1930, but look how good that photo looks. And here's a family member, born in 1889 and died in 1972. Right, which is interesting because in the 1950s they cleared out the families that lived in this area. Yeah, th this, is, this was no longer a viable residential area, so these people had to have already bought all of this. Right, must uh, be part of the family cemetery. Yeah, I'm guessing this is the wife, Frochi or Frosi, uh, because this guy was also born in 1889, but he died in 1930, so he left her behind by 42 years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's a lonely 42 years. Yeah, I mean, she still, she had the same last name, which means that she never remarried and, nope. you know, apparently pined for him for 42 years. But this thing just keeps going, y'all. See it way over there? Yep. Just busted headstone after busted headstone. And there's this very modern looking tombstone over here. 1926. Oh, wow. Now, here's an interesting. Oh, wow. Both of these people have the same date of death or the same year of death. So it kind of makes me wonder if they didn't die together, two sisters. And then, of course. There's this sad story. Now here's a grave that looks like they've come up and just sourced some local stones to outline where the grave is. And then there's another one here. Let me, uh, let me bring some light up on this. So you can see they just kind of sourced local stones. Just to mark the grave, I don't see any... Yeah, there's not a headstone. And there's clearly a grave in between them. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see this or not. There's a huge section of sunken ground in between these two. Now this is this right here is a little on the creepy side. The fact there's no markings at all, but there's these two very homemade, improvised-looking grave sites here. 
with another one in the middle that has nothing. It's like these two here meant enough to somebody to mark them off with stones, but not the one in the middle. And why didn't they come and put some kind of a marker there? Fascinating little spot right here. Wow. The uh, marker in here is designed to look like a tree stump. But look at the gothic ironwork on this fence. This is gorgeous stuff right here. Beautiful. And all down this side. That, that's impressive. So we're kind of at the edge of the cemetery and you can look out and kind of see where, if you go all the way to the bottom of the hill, where the lake just kind of comes up here. But then I gotta show y'all this. That's our campsite. That is how close we are to this cemetery. So how about that tour of the cemetery? That place is, <clears throat> is super cool. It's a gorgeous site. Yeah, Not only can I see the church marker, I can see that fenced in grave right at the very crest of the hill up here. I mean, that, that's just an absolutely gorgeous place. I have a couple of rules when it comes to things like cemeteries. One is I don't mess with anything. And the other is nothing but respect. Uh, I see a lot of people that go into places like that and they act a fool or they'll find something and they're like, oh, I'm gonna you know, take this with me or something. For one, it's, just, it's, it's disrespectful and it's stealing. I mean, honestly, whatever you believe about the afterlife or whatever you believe about paranormal stuff, it's just not a good idea to take things from a cemetery. Honestly, I don't see how anything good could come out of something like that. But yeah, we tried to, we tried to respect it. And while we do go up there as kind of a, a dark tourism kind of approach to it, we're definitely not gonna go up there and act like idiots or disrespect that property. And I suggest that you do the same if you find something like, I mean, this, this land out here is full of cemeteries. They're everywhere. Uh, it's not very often that we find one that's that close by that we can actually camp here. You know, we can't camp up there because uh, the rules prohibit it, but we can definitely camp down here and be right here by it. So tonight we're gonna have the trail cam put up there to see what we can capture. And we'll be listening for anything that we might hear. Last night, we did hear some coyotes, or a coyote at least, uh, very close by and kind of up in the area toward the cemetery. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if he shows up on the trail cam or if we hear any more of that tonight. But, uh, you know, this is a, this is a cool, uh, mildly spooky and creepy place to camp out. But I mean, I think the cemetery just kind of adds to that, that peaceful kind of thing. I don't feel creeped out. We have quiet neighbors. Yeah, the neighbors are quiet. You're not, you're not going to worry about them. Now, you know, zombie apocalypse starts <coughs> the whole other thing because they're just going to roll down the hill on us. Well, they can't swim, so. Yeah, you just will run that way. So we finished up dinner. We spent about an hour or so sitting around the campfire, enjoying the heat and the view of the stars and the lake. And now it's time to crawl into this super cozy sleeping bag that I've got back here. I showed you all the, uh, the climate bag at the beginning of the video. I was really impressed by how comfortable it was last night. It got very cold in here, even with the heaters going. The thing about campers like this is they're not heavily insulated. And when the temperature drops to a certain point, it, it just really, really gets cold. It kind of radiates through the walls. I was really glad to have that extra protection of that sleeping bag. And I, I slept so well last night. That thing is super comfortable. I highly recommend uh, this particular product. I will put a link down in the description box below the particular sleeping bag that I bought. But for now, it is time for me to climb in this thing and get some sleep. Tomorrow we will go searching for more adventures and bring you along. And then Monday morning, Mr. Fish and I both have to get up, break everything down and get back home because we will have to go to work. But for now, let me climb up in this bag and say good night. on here. Put a crack bag on this side. So, like this.
man, that thing is hot. So while we're sitting here eating Mr. Fish's breakfast burritos, these are carne asada burrito. Who made the uh, who made the filling? My cousin John Patton. John Patton, thank you for that carne asada. This, this makes a phenomenal burrito. But while we're sitting here eating, I want to talk about something that happened last night. And, I, and I'm not telling this story to be overly dramatic because we're camping near a cemetery. I don't know what time it was because my phone was down at the foot of the bed and, and my I didn't have my watch on. But I woke up at one point and I could hear a very faint sound. I mean, to the point where I almost couldn't hear it. I heard the sound of a woman singing. I don't know where it was coming from. I could just barely, I had to like be perfectly still. Personally, I think that what I was hearing was a radio somewhere in the distance. Okay. Uh, I think that maybe somebody was parked somewhere along here, or maybe there was a boat out or something and they had the radio going, because it kind of had that sound like radio waves just kind of being carried on the wind. Right. Sitting on a, on a beach, camped in front of a cemetery, and you wake up to hear a woman singing. It makes for kind of a crazy night. That's a little unnerving. Yeah, it, it really was. I, I uh, laid there for a little while just really straining to hear it and not being able to get any real detail, you know, what it was that was being sung or whatever, or figure out if I was hearing things. I mean, while it did sound like a woman singing, it could have been a coyote, it could have been a bobcat or something mm -hmm. like that, or, or some crazy bird that was out there. I mean, we've heard several loons. Mm -hmm. Yep, I haven't seen any. Other than the ones that are in this camper. Right. But uh, yeah, I just I, I wanted to, to tell that story because it was a little bit crazy. And that's, maybe it's the location. Maybe it's you know the fact that we're camping where we're camping that kind of has that that effect of mass hysteria, I guess. But yeah, it was it was weird waking up in the middle of the night hearing a woman. I'm singing. glad I didn't wake up for that. <laughs> I almost weird. woke you up. I almost woke and said, Jeremiah, do you hear that? But I heard you kind of uh, snoring a little bit. So I was like, no, nah, I don't want to wake him up and, and spook him with this kind of stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that made for an interesting night. So earlier in the video, I was jokingly telling y'all about our poop up camper, uh, the homemade outhouse that we set up uh, for a bathroom. But I do want to, I want to show you guys something. and and. Uh, this is not intended to be crude at all. As we've said a couple of times before, it is very, very cold on this trip. So we wanted to set up an outhouse so we could have a bathroom. We're, I mean, we're here for like four days. I had no idea how comfortable I could make this thing. And to be honest, every time we go out to use it, we don't want to come back inside. But I'm going to show you what we've got here. Essentially, we started out with just a pop-up shelter. It's one of these little things where you can change clothes or, you know, if you want to use it for a shower or something like that, you can. If you look inside the door, here's the secret. During the day, we keep one of the Mr. Heaters out here. And then we have a homemade toilet with a milk crate with a five gallon bucket in it, a trash can liner that has cat litter in it, and a snap-on toilet seat. You can get these things on Amazon. And they are a lifesaver when you're doing off-grid camping. Now walking around here, you can see that we have vent windows on the sides that allow you to have air circulating in there. And then of course, when it's not in use, we leave the front door open just to make sure everything's properly ventilated. Now the, the heater's not on, so you don't have to worry about burning up that door flap or anything. But what we'll do is when we're getting ready to, to make use of the outhouse and uh, turn the heater on, and then we'll sit in there for however long we want to stay to get warm and enjoy the heat, because that is the absolute warmest place at camp this weekend. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the big reveal, that is our chicken pot pie made with rustic chicken leftovers from dinner last night. Look at the beauty of this creation. It's amazing. Scoop us some out, Mr. Fish. Let's see what we're dealing with here. All right. So the topping, if that's puff pastry, which is a little better for using and stuff like this than trying to use a crust. Plus, it's a little lighter and uh, probably a little tastier. Look at that. Look at all of that. <laughs> oh, man. What a beautiful thing that is. That is amazing. So I was out wandering around brushing my teeth a few minutes ago, and I came across something that is slightly horrifying, and I'm glad I discovered it the way that I did because I'm trying to imagine what would happen if I were just out walking in the woods, maybe got up at night to go pee, 
and stumbled across this. Let me, let me show this to you guys. So look at this tree straight ahead, this tree right here. Now I'm gonna walk up to it. This camera is at eye level. And I'm gonna walk up to this tree, I'm gonna show you what it is I'm talking about. Look at these things. Oh my goodness. Look at these monstrosities and they go all down the tree. If you were walking in the woods and weren't paying attention and got too close to this, or say you leaned up against it to balance yourself, or you know, if you were relieving yourself and you wanted to just kind of lean on the tree, or I mean, that thing, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> okay, so it's got a little bitty splinter right there. That thing just got me, and that little one hurts like crazy. But imagine, I mean, it's like some kind of a man-made weapon. I mean, look at the, the spikes on this thing, and all the way down to its end, it has spikes. Imagine something falling on the ground, and uh, maybe you step on the barefoot. Or if you stumbled into this tree face first, and no caught, worries. look at, look up, look up. They get worse. Glad look I'm at this. My goodness. They go all the way up the tree. This entire tree is nothing but these hell spikes. I'm so glad I saw this thing during the day because now I know where I don't want to go out in the middle of the night <laughs> in the dark. Fish is going to go up the hill and set up the game camera in the cemetery so that we can see if there's anything to be seen tonight and if there's any cool creepy stuff that we catch. We fixed up a hand system, a hand rope system here for going up the hill because we figured we got to make a couple trips up there and to be honest that that road that took us up there is very long and very steep. This is a lot shorter distance and it gets us where we need to go. So in the morning, we'll get up, we use this to kind of get us back up there and get the camera. But for now, we'll just have this here. So our last evening at camp, we had this absolutely beautiful sunset out here. Jeremiah is getting ready to make some of his world famous chili. We're simplifying it tonight with a cowboy chili in the Dutch oven. We have used this Dutch oven constantly. It's a Cabela's brand. And I know a lot of people like specific brands and think that, uh, ooh, got smoke, and think that brands like Cabela's might be cheap, but I am, I'm really impressed with this thing and uh, I need to go and get one of those myself. Ooh. So I had to reposition the camera a little bit because the smoke from the fire tonight is incredible. So we're gonna get our chili ready. I'm not gonna chase Mr. Fish around with the camera tonight, shooting the whole process of making chili. We've got chili videos uh, up on the site. So if you wanna go find one of those, please do. Don't forget to go find Mr. Fish's YouTube channel. Subscribe to it and like a bunch of his videos and tell him how much you love watching him cook and how much you like seeing him hang out in the background of my videos like that. It's like a Sasquatch or something. What's up with that? Uh, incredible thing about this campsite, other than the fact that it is so peaceful, it's so out of the way. There's there's nobody out here. And you guys have seen the view. I've shown you that a couple of times. You've seen this sunset in this in the evenings right outside the front door of the camper. All weekend long, Fish has been spotting bald eagles. Uh, we have seen four bald eagles today. You are into birding, if, especially if you're looking to find bald eagles. This is a great place here at Land Between the Lakes. Every time we've been here, we've seen them. And it's funny watching Fish sitting here just enjoying the campfire and then jumping up with his camera going, there's a bald eagle. So he's, he's having a good time with this. So we're starting to break down the camp. We've got to get up early in the morning. Mr. Fish has a shift tomorrow afternoon, so he's going to have to leave early in the morning. 
So we're going to get up and get the rest of the camp broken down. But we started tonight getting the little things, some, some of the tables, things like that put away. We're looking forward to a nice night in the camper. A little less cold than we've been experiencing. But uh, for right now, we're going to cook some chili. And uh, we'll, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Cowboy chili. Some of the leftover cookies. Oops. Me? Ooh. Mm. That's good. Wow. Ooh, it's got meat. It's just homemade hot sauce in this stuff. And it woke it up. Mm, yeah. That, that's good stuff. I know you were saying this isn't your best, but mm. it's a good chili. Oh, thank you. Bye. So we were outside earlier getting ready to start making the chili and we had something a little on the spooky side and went down. You know, one of the things about camping in this kind of environment, way off the grid, way back in the middle of nowhere, is uh, there is a certain vulnerability that goes with it. I was loading a couple of things in the car, we were getting ready to start cooking, where we see headlights coming down the road and a truck pulls up. Now we're in a dead end where we are. If this truck pulls in, you know, we're lit up, we've got the fire going, we've got lights on in the camper and this guy pulls in and then proceeds to just sit there with his headlights pointed toward us. You can't see him. I stepped around to the side of my car. I was putting something in the back of the time. I stepped around the side of my car made sure he could see me and could see that I could see him. And eventually he backed up and headed back down the road toward the main highway. A few minutes later, we heard the sound of the door slamming. We didn't hear any engines, anything like that. We just heard the sound of a car door slam. We're out here in the middle of nowhere, in the dark, hearing a door slam after somebody pulled up into our campsite, stared us down for a little bit, and left. Jeremiah had brought some night vision gear with him, so we broke that out, and we were kind of scouting the area. Fortunately, where we are, there's really not a way to sneak up on somebody. The beach is very rocky, so if they walk that way, we hear them from a mile off. The roads are covered with rocks and debris and stuff like that, so there's there's not a way to just quietly walk around somebody. You know, they might have been just, you know, stepping out of their car for a second when we heard the door and then got back in and drove away and they were far enough away we could leave. It was a little bit spooky. Uh, yeah. I am glad that, you know, Jeremiah is a, a, a former Marine and, and, you know, I'm a law enforcement officer and I've got my pew pew and we've got a variety of other weapons. I mean, we have met a lot of makeshift stuff around the camp. I brought my gun. Pointy gun. <laughs> <laughs> Pointy sticks, whatever we can use, but uh, you know, we, we well, live opportunity. Yeah, we didn't want to end up having to, to use anything, but it does make for an uneasy evening. And you know, it'll probably be one of those things that once we go to bed tonight, I'll be sitting there on high alert listening to hear if somebody's trying to sneak back up. Because honestly, you know, if you're a serial killer and you wanted to kill somebody, this is a good way to do it. If you're looking to rob somebody, especially if you're an outdoorsman and you're looking to get some outdoors gear, this is a good way to do it. It would be a stupid thing to come to this camp, but <laughs> you don't become a a robber because the job at NASA didn't work out. So you know, stupid is what stupid is. Mm -hmm. So here we are at the saddest part of any camping weekend. It's time to go home. We've already packed up the camper behind us. We've got the campsite broken down and loaded into the cars. And now we've got to hit the trail and get back home. We went up to the cemetery this morning and gathered up the trail cam. Unfortunately, no paranormal activity to report. Not even any normal activity to report. It's been a very peaceful weekend. We were, we were hoping for a little bit of something spooky, but I mean, between the, the weird guy kind of coming by the campsite last night and me waking up to hear some woman singing in the woods, maybe that counts. It's kind of creepy. I'm glad so, I didn't hear it. We're already planning our next outing. I know how much you guys love the, the camping when me and Mr. Fish go hang out. So we're going to try to do another one of these very soon. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to go down and click on that like button. Also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're not already and click on the notification bell so that you get alerted of every upcoming video we've got. Also, down in the description box, there is an Amazon wish list. It's just a few items that we picked out to kind of help us along our journey and maybe some things that we can review and if there's something that you're curious about, you can send it to us and we'll review it and let you know how it is. Also, if there's an item that you'd like to see us review, put a comment down below and tell us about it. We'll add it to the wish list and then you can, uh, you can send it to us. How about that? Do it. But for now, we're fixing to uh, get on down the road. It's been a tremendous amount of fun this weekend. Very relaxing. If you're planning on camping in the Land Between the Lakes area, keep in mind something. A couple of months ago, we had those devastating tornadoes 
that ripped through Kentucky. It did damage quite a bit in this area. There's a lot of storm damage. You can, you can see the paths that the tornadoes came through this area. Because of the nature of this particular recreation area, the government doesn't necessarily come in and clear trails. So it's very possible you might be driving down a road and find a bunch of big trees falling across the road. Those are probably going to be there for a while unless somebody comes out on their own and moves them out of the way. The area is, I wouldn't say devastated because there's so much that's still here, but there are areas of this that are devastated by the storm. So keep that in mind when you come through. Expect the possibility that you're going to come across some impassable areas. I mean, that's already a, a situation with some of the fire roads out here anyway. There's a reason why four-wheel drive groups really like to come out here and drive these fire roads because there's a lot of very deep holes. If you are coming out here, don't just drive through a hole thinking it's going to be a puddle. It could be all the way down to the other side of the world. But for now, we're going to sign off. We're going to get on the road. I got to say bye to Mr. Fish. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed living vicariously through us on our camping outing and seeing this amazingly beautiful site that we've been at this weekend. But until next time, prepare for the world that you live in, not the one you wish existed. And we'll see you around. Next time. Next time.